Security was traditionally considered an afterthought in software development. It is becoming an increasingly important concern for all aspects of app development, from design to deployment and beyond. The number of programs produced, distributed, deployed, and patched across network continually increases. As a result, application security features must deal with a wide range of risks. Let's take an example. A malicious script may be mirrored on the victim's web browser or kept in a database and run whenever the user contacts the proper function, depending on the kind of attack in question here. This allows malicious code to be entered in the case of an output. The major cause of this attack is faulty user input validation, which allows malicious input to enter the final output. An evil user can enter a script that will be injected into the website's code. The browser will then be unable to determine whether the process code is harmful. As a result, a malicious script is performed on the victim's browser or a bogus form is shown to the users. Are you aware of which attack this is? If not, do stay till the end to find the correct answer. Are you aware of which attack this is? If not, please stay till the end of the video to know the correct answer. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video on application security. Before we move forward, Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Let's take a look at the topics to be covered today. We start by learning about application security and its different types. We learn about the most common vulnerabilities in AppSec, followed by the importance of application security in today's cybersecurity space. Next, we cover some attacks against application layer security and end the video with some protection techniques to enforce application security parameters. So let's start by learning about application security from a grassroots perspective. Application security, which is often known as AppSec, protects application software from external security threats by utilizing security software, hardware, methodologies, best practices, and different processes. Organizations require application security technologies that safeguard all of their programs from internal to popular external apps on consumer mobile phones. These solutions must address the whole development cycle and provide testing after an application has been deployed to detect possible issues. Application security mechanisms must be capable of testing web pages for possible and exploitable vulnerabilities, analyzing code, and assisting in the administration of development and safety management processes. The testing solutions must also be simple and easy to install for system administrators worldwide. Consumers utilize hundreds of applications daily to access theoretically important and favored services such as e-commerce, banking, music, etc. To be productive, these professionals use a variety of software solutions as well, ranging from online word checkers to tablet-based creative tools, among other things. Backend software, of course, exists to automate essential operations and processes and decrease this human labor. But to make matters worse, the quantity and complexity of these apps and their backend code is increasing. The software security problem 10 years ago was about securing desktop apps and static web pages that were natively harmless and easy to scale through and defend. Because of outsourced development, the number of legacy programs and in house development that uses third party, open source, and commercialized off the shelf software modules, the software supply chain has become considerably more convoluted. Now that we understand application security on a general level, let us go through some of the different categories or the types of application security. The three major types to be covered in this section, web application security, API security, and cloud native application security. A web application is a program available through the internet and it operates on a web server. The client is accessed using a web browser. The applications by definition must allow connections from clients across unsecured networks. This exposes them to a variety of risks. Many online apps are mission critical and include sensitive customer data, making them an attractive target for attackers and a top concern for any cybersecurity program or framework. The advent of HTTPS, which offers an encrypted channel of communication, guards versus man in the middle attacks or MITM attacks, has addressed several online application weaknesses. Many weaknesses though still persist. Many security providers have created solutions specifically geared to safeguard online applications in response to the rising challenge of web application security. A web application firewall 
is an example of a security technology meant to identify and prevent application layer assaults in the case of web applications. When it comes to APIs, APIs that have security flaws are the root of many major data breaches. They have the potential to reveal sensitive data and disrupt vital corporate processes. API security flaws include insufficient authentication, unintended data disclosure, and a failure to apply rate restriction, which allows API abuse. The requirement for API security, like the necessity for web application security, has led to the creation of sophisticated equipment that can discover API vulnerabilities and protect APIs in production level. The third type is cloud native application security. Infrastructure and environments are often built up automatically in cloud native apps depending on declarative configuration, which is known as infrastructure as code or IAC. Developers are tasked with developing declarative settings and application code, both of which should be secure. Because practically everything is defined during the development stage, shifting left is even more crucial in cloud native setups. Traditional testing techniques can help cloud native apps, but they are insufficient. Dedicated cloud native security solutions are mandatory at this point of time, which are capable of instrumenting vessels, container clusters, and serverless operations, reporting on security concerns, and providing developers with a quick feedback loop. Now that you have covered the different types of application security, let us go through some of the most common vulnerabilities that these frameworks face on a daily basis. First is cryptographic failure. When data is not adequately safeguarded in transit and at rest, Cryptographic failures, which are formerly known as sensitive data exposures, occur. It has the potential to reveal credentials, health information, credit card details, and personal information as well, depending on the type of data being protected in that particular case. Injection attacks. See, threat actors can use injection vulnerabilities to convey malicious information to a web application interpreter. It has the potential to assemble and execute this data on the server. SQL injection is a popular type of injection, which I've already covered in an introduction for this video. Another major vulnerability are outdated components. Vulnerable and out-of-date components encompass any vulnerability caused by obsolete or unmaintained software. It can happen if you construct or even use an application without first learning about its core components and versions. Authentication failures. Identification and authentication failure, which are previously known as broken authentication, encompass any security issue involving user identities. Identity attacks and exploitation may be avoided by implementing secure session administration, authentication, and validation for all identities in their organization. In the next section, let us cover some of the protection mechanisms employed by cybersecurity firms and third-party automated software to prevent the application layer from being bombarded with SQL injections and other attacks. The first is a web application firewall or WAF. A web application firewall monitors and filters HTTP traffic between a web application and the World Wide Web. Web application firewall architecture does not address all risks, but it may be used in conjunction with other defense mechanisms. It can be used with a portfolio of security solutions to provide a comprehensive defense against diverse attack robes. It is a protocol layer 7 protection in the open systems interconnection or the OSI model paradigm that helps defend online application against attacks such as cross-site scripting, cross-site fraud, escape injection, and file intrusion. Unlike a proxy server which conceals the identity of client computers by an intermediary, a WAF functions as a reverse proxy shielding the server from exposure. It acts as a barrier in front of a web application, protecting it from the internet. The clients must pass through the web application firewall before they can access the application. The second is threat assessment. A list of sensitive assets to safeguard will assist you in understanding the threat to your firm and how to minimize them. Considering how a hacker can infiltrate an application, if existing security protections are in place and whether additional tools or defense capabilities are required, it's also crucial to keep your security expectations in check. Nothing is impenetrable, even with the most stringent security measures. It would be best if you were realistic about what you believe your team can handle in the long term. When pushed too aggressively, safety regulations and procedures might be disregarded. Remember that safety is a lengthy and time-taking project that requires the collaboration of other employees and sometimes even your customers. The next topic is privilege management. 
Limiting privileges is vital, especially for mission critical and sensitive systems. The least privilege principle states that access to programs and data should be limited to those who require them when they require them. For two reasons, the least privilege principle is absolutely critical. The first is that hackers may compromise less privileged accounts and ensuring they do not acquire access to highly sensitive systems is critical. The second is that internal dangers are equally harmful as external adversaries. If insiders go bad, it's critical to ensure they never have more power than they need, minimizing the harm that they may be able to cause to the organization. That's the end for this video. Hope you learned something new today. If you have any doubts or any issues with the topic, feel free to let us know in the comment section below and we will get back to you as soon as possible with some solutions. Subscribe to our channel for more informative videos like this. Thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.